The greatest gift you ever give is your honest self. That's a quote from Fred Rogers. And self-awareness is a remarkable leadership skill. In fact, it's the first in a series of four core leadership skills we're going to cover here in separate episodes. When you practice it in the moment, or at least daily, self-awareness has the power to help you be more sensitive and thoughtful in your approach, and it opens your eyes to how others see you. Situational self-awareness allows you to course correct and change your behavior or approach in the moment without being without having to worry about being reprimanded. When you're self-aware and can be aware of others simultaneously by showing empathy, well, people will fall all over themselves to follow you. In this episode, I'm going to give you four ways to increase your self-awareness that'll help you become a better leader. And they don't just apply to leadership. You can apply these skills anywhere in your life. This is Timeless Leadership, where we explore the values and principles that drive extraordinary leaders. We look for the timeless virtues that are just as relevant in the 21st century as they were in the first century. Universal truths that will help make us better versions of ourselves. Hi, I'm Scott Monty, and welcome to Timeless Leadership. As an executive coach, I work with lots of leaders who are at the beginning of their leadership journey. And one of the things I see a need for is self-awareness. Early on in leadership careers, there's a natural inclination to want to feed your ego. And self-awareness helps to guard against that so that you're focused on the care and feeding of your team rather than of your ego. By the way, I hope you're subscribed to the Timeless and Timely newsletter. You can get the notes for the show through that. And every week I offer stories for curious, lifelong learners like you who are looking for answers to today's challenges. It's funny how so many of them have already been answered by leaders in the past I just find them and put them in context for you. So check us out at www.timelesstimely.com. Have you ever had an experience when you were dumbstruck in a conversation? Someone just took you completely off guard and you found yourself unable to reply it because you were so taken aback. And it was only later, after thinking it over and over in your mind, that you came up with the perfect rejoinder. But then you're kicking yourself that you didn't have the presence of thought to come up with it in the moment. Late blooming self-awareness, that is self-awareness obtained through Reflection weeks, months, or even years after the fact, that can be a crippling process. But think about the alternative, and this is one I've experienced more times than I care to remember. Think of a time when you do say something or you do behave in a certain way, when you are able to show people what you're made of. That feels good. And most of the time, these are just inconsequential chats or incidents. I've talked about this before when people have expressed to me how I've impacted their life through something that seems fairly meaningless to me. And then occasionally there are embarrassing moments, moments that we later regret. We have belated waves of shame that pass over us that cause us to maybe cringe retroactively. I think back now to some of the things I said or ways I treated people at certain points in my career, and boy, I just, I want to crawl into a hole. I'm remorseful over the way I made people feel, 
and I feel great regret over how inconsiderate I was. But here's the thing. Spending too much time on regret can be a waste of time because you can't go back and change what happened in the past. But what you can do is take that knowledge, take that energy, and use it to push you forward and act in a way that reflects what you've learned about yourself in the process. And that's the thing with self-awareness. It opens us up to all kinds of potential things. You know, if self-awareness were a prescription drug, it would probably come with a listing of adverse side effects. Warning. May cause fits of discomfort, up to and including dealing with reality, guilt, remorse, shame, regret, anxiety, overthinking, and self-consciousness. It's funny. We think of our leaders as outward-facing people because that's what they do. They interact with the public. They interact with employees. And... Self-awareness is one of the core leadership skills that's inward-focused. I don't know if you remember, but back in episode 34, I talked with David Novak, author of Take Charge of You. It was all about doing the work on yourself, developing a healthy sense of self-awareness and self-care before you can take care of others. Much like putting on a mask on the airplane and the emergency instructions or you take care of yourself before helping others. Self-awareness can be the most challenging of these four core leadership skills that we're going to talk about in future episodes. But it can also serve as a foundation for strengthening all of your other leadership skills. You're going to be as effective as your self-awareness allows you to be. And, of course, it's going to vary based on how well you understand yourself and how other people view you and how you navigate the interactions that you find yourself in. Before you begin on this journey of self-awareness, I want to help you understand the difference in how you see yourself versus how others see you. There's a tool, a model, called the Johari Window and it helps you organize your self-awareness into a two-by-two grid. And I've got it available for you in the show notes. If you check the, the website, the visual is there. But in the meantime, picture in your mind this grid with two axes. There's a horizontal one going from left to right. That represents what you know and don't know about yourself. Unknown on the left and known on the right. And then there's a vertical one representing what other people know or don't know about you. So, known on the top and unknown on the bottom. So then you get four boxes. Public, private, the unknowable, and blind spots. So, starting in the upper right quadrant, this is what others know about you. That's public. And moving down to the lower right, what others don't know about you, that's private. And then moving over to the unknown side of yourself and what others don't know about you, this is, this is the unknowable quadrant, lower left. And really, this isn't relevant because nobody knows it. But then you move to the upper left, what others know about you that you don't know about yourself. This is the blind spot box. And I'd say that this quadrant is perhaps the most interesting quadrant of all. The blind spots that you're truly blind to could prevent you from accurately assessing your behaviors, your emotions, your anxieties, your performance. When something's revealed that others know about you, to you, something that you didn't recognize about yourself, you might feel blindsided. When you suddenly discover how other people really see you, that has the potential to create some real dynamic and powerful change. And these moments don't happen all the time. They can be very rare, but at the same time, these are precious gifts. 
And while the truth can hurt, it can also instruct us. Every time we discover a truth about ourselves, guess what? Our self-awareness increases. A good leadership coach will help you identify your blind spots and make a plan for addressing them. Let me say that again. A good leadership coach will help you identify your blind spots and make a plan for addressing them. Now, before you can address or increase your self-awareness, there's four facets of self-awareness I want you to consider. Wisdom, identity, reputation, and brand. We'll go through each one of these. Wisdom, identity, reputation, and brand. So, first one, leadership wisdom. These are insights that you've gained from your experience that you apply to the challenges that you face. The best leaders all have a, a whole depository of lessons and anecdotes that they can bring to bear on new challenges. This is kind of what I do at the Timeless and Timely newsletter, taking the lessons of leaders from all ages and apply them to today. Now, these insights that you gain yourself aren't spontaneously, but you get them through practice. See, the way you do this, the way you develop your leadership wisdom is by taking the time to reflect on your experiences. This means maybe revisiting experiences from multiple perspectives, engaging in surface reflection to identify past actions and behaviors, or maybe practicing more deep reflection to examine some of your underlying beliefs and emotions and uh, assumptions. And this reflection isn't just a one-time thing. You have to do it again and again. And the best leaders often return to the same experiences repeatedly to try and extract new insights from them as they grow. We have a whole section on Timeless and Timely related to reflection. I've got a link in the show notes for you to get access to those reflection-related posts. The second facet we're going to consider is leadership identity. This is who you are in your current professional and personal context. Your, your leadership identity, or maybe your social identity, that influences how you lead, whether you're aware of it or not. In fact, we all make assumptions about our own identity and the identity of other people. Unfortunately, when we work with other people, assumptions are often treated as reality. And that's why in our global marketplace, it's even more critical to understand your own identity and show how it shapes interactions with other people or to understand how it shapes interactions with other people. Now, you can think of your, your identity as three concentric rings, and, and these rings may overlap. The outermost ring is your given identity. These are things that you really have no say in, things that are part of who you are. They're natural traits like age, nationality, race, maybe even some physical characteristics. Right? That's your given identity. And then there's your chosen identity, the second ring. These traits describe your status, uh, characteristics you control, your skills. So common attributes in the chosen identity are your occupation, uh, maybe uh, political affiliation, uh, hobbies, other things like that. And then the innermost ring, the third ring, is your core identity. It's the qualities that make you who you are. Some may change over the course of your life, while others are going to remain constant. These are things like behaviors and values and beliefs. All of these, your core identity, your chosen identity, and your given identity, 
make up your leadership identity. A third facet, leadership reputation. This is how others perceive you as a leader based on your current and previous behavior. Your leadership reputation is what other people think of you as a leader. And understanding your reputation helps you comprehend how you might be perceived or judged by others. And this can be tricky. Knowing how you're perceived will strengthen your ability to communicate with and influence other people. It's just so critical. Understanding how you're perceived by others. And in order to do this, ask questions about the reputation you've established and what emotions you might evoke in the workplace. Try to view your behavior as others may. Check to see if your reputation aligns with your values and your desired leadership brand. Which takes us to the fourth facet, leadership brand. This is what you aspire to, the actions that you take that support that mission. How do people know the leadership you're capable of and how do you communicate it? That's what your leadership brand is. It's an aspirational set of leadership traits and behaviors. And understanding your brand, how you'd like to be perceived, allows you to act, to change those perceptions in a positive and authentic way. Your brand should identify your strengths and communicate them to others. And here's the thing. You need to provide a consistent experience that meets expectations that other people might have of you. And you you need to make explicit that which is implicit. That is, over-communicate. Explain what you're doing and why. And the key here is to bring to the surface and enhance your greatest strengths and make sure you're communicating them to people that you encounter, whether they're inside or outside of your organization. A strong leadership brand can only be developed if you're self-aware. You need to know what your leadership reputation is and have a deliberate plan for strengthening it to fuel your leadership aspirations. When you put in the work, you can gain greater internal and external self-awareness in these four areas. And that will pay significant dividends in your career development. Please make sure you're subscribed wherever you get podcasts and at Timeless and Timely on Substack. I'll have one episode on each of the other three remaining core leadership skills, and I don't want you to miss a single one. And if you'd like to work on your self-awareness, please drop me a note at timeless at scottmonte.com or use the contact page on my website. I'd love to help you develop your leadership wisdom, identity, reputation, and brand on the way to becoming more self-aware. Until we're together again, remember that your self-awareness will help you inspire others to learn more, dream more, do more, and become more. And that's a timeless leader. I'm Scott Monty. There's so much to learn.